Hello everybody and welcome to the poor man's chemist. In this video I am going to demonstrate the prep of thallium sulfate from the metal. Now longtime fans of the channel might remember that way back and towards the beginning of the old channel so back in 2019. I did this prep before however back then I was just kind of winging it and as I came to discover way back then, if you just try to dissolve thallium in sulfuric acid, it will take days. The product, because you end up having to, you know, top off the sulfuric acid every now and again, or add water to it constantly, is you just don't get a very good product out of it. If you wanted to make an acidic solution of thallium sulfate, it seems to be the way to go. And if you use concentrated sulfuric acid, especially if you heat it up, um, at least one time I have done this, I have had it break down to the oxide. I think thallium one oxide because it was a brown substance, but I don't know. That's not a reaction I was really able to find anywhere in the literature. And it could have been thallium three oxide just as easy as thallium one oxide. I honestly don't know. So anyway, to do this prep, we have 10 grams of thallium here. Focus, you piece of shit. Oh, there goes my forceps. That's lovely. Okay, there we go. Nice silvery metal. You guys have seen it before. It really isn't much to look at. It looks very much like lead. Um, thallium is active enough that it has to be stored under paraffin oil. So the first step is to remove the thallium from that and to get the paraffin oil off of it. As soon as I pick up my forceps and clean them. I think the gloves will protect my hand, but, you know, thallium stuff. There we go. Big old chunk of thallium. It's nice and weighty. Beautiful. Okay. Let's transfer that to the beaker. Come on, you little mugger. Get in there. All right. Let me go get rid of these gloves. Let's not tempt the fates. Okay, come back when I get this set up and ready to go. All right, the next step is to add a minimal amount of dilute sulfuric acid. This is 1.59 molar, so not very concentrated. I've found about one and a half molar seems to be best. We are just going to add just enough to... There we go, maybe a little bit more than that, since it is 10 grams of the stuff. Now, the next step is to turn on our stirring and to heat this up, although not to boiling. If it gets too hot, it's gonna go tits up, so we don't wanna heat it up too hot. I would say keep it at about 70, 80. It can be good and warm. It just should not approach boiling. Obviously, um, you want to make sure that the solution is not going to be producing a fuck ton of aerosols or splashing little droplets of this shit around all over the place. That would be bad. In fact, this is add just a little bit more. We don't want to go overboard on the sulfuric acid either. Um, from this point, if I have to dilute it, I'll just use, or add any more, I'll just use water. So, if we just try it like this, this shit will take days. What we need to do in order to speed things along is to add just a couple of drops of concentrated nitric acid. Not much. It's just going to help the whole dissolving process along. Turn that around here. Okay, don't splash that shit on me. I don't want that shit on me. If you're working with thallium, I recommend OCD levels of hand washing just to be on the safe side. Now, now you know how I've worked with this shit for years and never been poisoned by it. Doesn't take much, it's just common fucking sense. Doesn't exactly make a lot of volatile compounds or anything. Just a few 
few drops there. We'll start with that. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Those are pretty tiny drops. There we go. A couple of milliliters, if even. All right. Cover it, because that will help catch any little stray droplets. And now we wait. How long? Even with the nitric acid catalyst, this is still going to take a while. Um, although we will shorten the process from days to a few hours at the most. And that's just a question of being patient. So I will come back when there is something to report. All right. It's gently refluxing now. Turn the temperature down a little bit. And now it's just a question of waiting. The way I've done this in the past is just every now and again, I'll add a few drops of nitric acid and just keep stirring it. Keep the temperature warm, you know, but not too warm. And just be prepared to wait. With a great big chunk like this, it's probably going to take a little while. So I will come back when it's either all gone or there is some change that is worth reporting. All right, so it's almost completely dissolved now. It's taken a little over an hour, I guess an hour and a half maybe. I ended up adding another couple of milliliters of nitric acid to this to speed it along. And at one point it got too hot and started boiling. Uh, but, um, you know, that did make it dissolve a hell of a lot faster. And thankfully there was no decomposition. So it's almost done now. As soon as it's finished, um, take it, I guess, heat it up and take the top off of it and let it evaporate down some and then allow it to crystallize. When I took it off the heat earlier and let it cool down, the thallium sulfate started crystallizing out on its own. So there's definitely a fair amount of it in there. And um, yeah. I will come back when we're ready to crystallize this shit and get our product.
Okay, everybody. So I have evaporated it down to a little under 40 mils, and we have some absolutely beautiful Pretty Death Crystals. I do so love Pretty Death Crystals. That's like enough crystallized thallium sulfate to kill 15 grown men. Oh, it's so goddamn sexy. Never feels so alive as when you're holding a beaker full of death with beaker tongs. Anyhow... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I posted up some pictures of this on YouTube and I asked people to guess. I'm like, here's the compound for the next video. Guess what it is? And so many people were so close. You guys, you know, picked out that it was a salt right away. Um, had a couple of interesting suggestions. One dude's like methylamino rex. I'm like, God damn, I haven't even heard of that compound in years. Um, but a lot of people were suggesting like, oh, it's a potassium or an ammonium or a cesium salt. And it's like, you're so close, man. Yes, it is another large monovalent cation. And everybody's guessing like nitrate or chlorate. And it's like, you're so close. Yes, it is an oxoanion. But like only one person guessed sulfate um, that I can remember. Like a bunch of other people, like nitrate was the most common one. I think perchlorate came up several times. Iodate, bromate. Iodate and bromate wouldn't crystallize like this, gosh, for thallium. It would be too insoluble. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that was kind of amusing. It's like, God damn, y'all know I'm like the thallium master of the Internet and nobody guessed a thallium salt? Huh. Besides, I mean... Looking at the way it crystallized, that'd be, I mean, I can see potassium nitrate or ammonium nitrate, absolutely. But, I mean, I, I would put like a mercury or thallium salt right on up there in the list of possibilities just because those compounds, their compounds tend to crystallize beautifully. I don't know if it's the size of the cation that does it. I don't know. It just seems to be, or it works out where those like large metal atoms tend to make beautifully crystalline compounds. It's the damnedest thing. Anyhow, what I'm going to do now is I am going to cool this down in some ice water to get as much to crystallize out as possible, and then we're going to filter this shit. Um, have to evaporate down the filtrate a little more to get a second crop of crystals, but I think once it's been filtered out and pressed dry and it's ready to go into the desiccator, we can about wrap this up, because, I mean, do you really need to see me dry it on video? It's just going to sit in the desiccator overnight. So anyway, it'll just be a white powder tomorrow. I mean, not really a whole lot to see. But I will come back when we are ready to filter this and wrap this up. people there they are um i don't believe that this stuff is hygroscopic or if it is not it's not that much i don't think um nevertheless i'm going to get this into the desiccator here in just a second i have the next crop of crystals it's already starting to evaporate down here but i'll tell you what you have to be so careful with everything when you're doing this you know i mean on the one hand, working with thallium is not really all that different than working with any other element, right? It really isn't. But on the other hand, you do have to be extra careful with it just because of its nature. Like, you know, I made sure to rinse my gloves before I even started to clean up just to get anything that was on them off. 
I then went through and rinsed down the hose. I rinsed down the handle to turn on the hose, rinsed off the outside of the water bottles. It's just common sense stuff and making sure that you've gotten any sources of cross-contamination dealt with. But I mean, so long as you go into it, keeping all this in mind and just maintaining safety awareness, this is really not difficult to work with. So anyway, look at that shit, man. That is so goddamn beautiful. See, and who would know if somebody didn't have the balls to actually try working with this stuff because the fear of it is completely irrational. I mean, you just don't touch it. How fucking hard is this? <laughs> ah, so exasperating sometimes. Anyway. Look, it's so pretty. Oh, 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 look, I'm using my finger. Oh, my God, I'm going to drop dead any second now. Or I could just wash my hands. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking beautiful. Well, there you go, kids. So what my plan for this is to use this to create a solution of thallium-1 nitrate that will not have any residual acid in it or chloride ion. And then I'm going to concentrate that. And then we are going to try to precipitate out thallium cyanide from that by the addition of a concentrated solution of sodium potassium cyanide. All of the literature says this will work. I'm not sure how that's possible, considering that thallium cyanide is insanely soluble in water. The only thing that I can think is that it's the common ion effect. So not all of the thallium will precipitate, but that's okay. We'll recover it as the chloride. It'll be fine. So there you go. Pretty death crystals. So fun. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, share the video. Donate a few bucks if you are enjoying tutorials on how to make pretty death crystals. And until the next one, you guys, I see you later. Look at it, it's so pretty. Oh, it's so awesome. Oh, I love it. <laughs>